Hello there Pixel Pushers, it's Sadiq Hussain here from the uh, Pixel Pushers YouTube channel. You'll have to uh, just excuse my uh, voice, uh, throat's a little bit uh, off last couple of days, but um, we'll try and get a video done today. Uh, and this is a, a quick follow-up to the, the last video that we did, which was all about using the overlay blend mode. Now the overlay blend mode can be very powerful uh, to increase or to control the contrast of your image and that's what I want to demonstrate here today in a slightly different way uh, the last video was a little bit tongue-in-cheek is grey the new black in the sense that what can you do with 50% grey overlay layer with the overlay blend mode um, but this time we're going to do it slightly differently and and uh, this basically allows you to control the contrast in a given area of an image and the strength of it by the type of brush you use, the parameters of the brush, and of course, whether you're painting with a darker than 50% gray or lighter than 50% gray. If you refer back to the previous video, and I'll put a link into the description for you, is that 50% gray has no effect, okay? Uh, uh, white, uh, will give you a, a certain amount and 100% and black will give you a certain effect. And what we want to do is the in-betweens of the two, okay? So uh, let's start by just adding a, uh, we've got this image open. We're gonna work on two images, this one and this one. So a, a black and white one and a color one, okay? But of course, you choose whichever image you want to work on. It's fairly straightforward. The main thing you've got to consider is uh, work on a new layer, change the blend mode, and of course, change the brush and brush parameters. That is key to find control. Okay, so I'm going to add a new pixel layer. So there's nothing in that pixel that we're not adding a 50% gray or anything because we want to control where the overlay blend mode affects the contrast of an image. So I'm going to change the blend mode of this blank pixel layer to overlay in advance so I can see what I'm doing. So that's now overlay. Obviously has no effect because we've, there's nothing in that top layer. Uh, there's no pixels at all. But if I then go to the paintbrush and if I paint with black, as you can see there, let me just change the size of the brush. Let me look at the brush parameters make sure that it's a soft brush say something like that and uh, up here on the brush uh, we don't want it to be a hundred percent opacity because uh, we want to be able to add the uh, the effect of the contrast um, and uh, the flow needs to be so we don't need to uh, it to be a solid application of paint if it was painting and and you don't want a hard brush you want a soft brush then just change you obviously change the size of your brush to suit now when we're painting with black or darker than 50 percent gray and i'm going to paint it on a darker part of the sky so the blue at the bottom is lighter and the blue at the top is slightly ever so slightly darker so if i paint on there with just smooth strokes you can change the brush parameters to suit then that's making that darker if i then switch to a white and then paint here it will make the light blue lighter so effectively you're increasing the contrast between the the darker blue at the top and the lighter blue at the bottom in the case of this image and you know you can reduce the size uh, that that strength is a bit too much so i'm going to just dial back and change that uh, opacity down, bring it down to 10, 15% and uh, the flow can come down as well. So you can experiment obviously, but the, it's the principle I want you to get. So if I'm painting with white, it lightens it. If I'm painting with uh, black, it darkens the underlying color because it's an overlay blend mode. Now, where we've got a light shirt there, let's just zoom in and reduce the size of the brush. By painting on that, it will lighten the light shirt. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll darken the dark part of his kit. And that way, it will increase the contrast of the image, but to our choosing. So it's not across the whole image and then you apply a mat uh, to try and um, block out the effect. That's one way of doing it, but you might want to do it 
with uh, extra control. Now I'm going to paint with black, but on the black areas. So that will make that darker. And hence what we'll have is a much more contrasty image, but a contrast that we can control, that we can fine tune, even to the degree is that those let the, 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 the number six on his um, shirt there, football shirt, we can control that and make that darker, make sure that I am on dark, yes I am, and then we're basically enhancing the darkness of that and thereby the contrast in comparison to the lighter shirt. It's ever so subtle, and that's the beauty of this method, is that you are using the overlay blend mode. Remember, overlay is a contrast-based blend mode to fine-tune where you want to apply contrast and how much, based not just on the selection of the brush, but also the parameters of the brush and also the uh, opacity. And now at the moment, that layer over that layer, it's 100% opacity. What we changed up here was the opacity of the brush. And if you feel that that um, effect is too strong, of course, you can change the opacity down. But before I do that, let me show you before and after. So that's before, and that's a higher contrast. And particularly look at the, uh, the player's shoes and socks and shorts. There is a higher contrast. Now, the way I've actually quickly done that here, that's not quite as effective, but it's the principle of it that I want you to uh, to be looking at. Okay, so let's go on to the other image. Now, this is a, a monochrome image, but of course, high contrast monochrome image, you can control which bits you want contrast. So perhaps this gray cladding on this building, you want to increase or decrease the contrast of that. Same principle, let's add a blank pixel layer in Affinity Photo just by clicking on that icon at the bottom right of the layers palette. And we go to the paintbrush uh, and automatically it's selected the, uh, the darker color. Okay, and just want to make sure we've got the appropriate brush. Uh, the opacity of that is too strong. I always like to start with a low opacity. You can always change it afterwards. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom into that so you can see it a bit better. So now when I paint there, can you see it's making that cladding darker? And then I can go up to that part. And you can obviously make it as subtle or as detailed as you want. Now, for demonstration purposes here, I'm not taking a huge amount of care, but you would, uh, I would, if I was doing it for real, you know, on my image. But to demonstrate the principle, this is what we're doing. Overlay blend mode, adds contrast, but you can choose where simply by using a brush. So I'm making that darker. And of course, I'd want to make this lighter to increase the contrast. I switch to white and then, and then paint here. And if you had a graphics tablet, that would be far easier with a pencil, with a stylus, rather than using a mouse. I'm actually using the trackpad on my MacBook Air. Uh, not the best way of doing it. Certainly you don't get the same amount of control with a graphics tablet far better. And those of you who've used that will know that. Okay, next time I think I will plug in my graphics tablet and use that for the next demonstration. Okay, so again, we can do that one. You can see what we're doing here. We are selectively changing the contrast of parts of an image and that could be any kind of image it could be a landscape it could be a portrait by basically using the overlayer blend mode with the appropriate brush strength to give us the effect that we want 
move that up because I really want to change this here. And as we get nearer to the bottom of this building, clearly the the brush needs to be slightly bigger so that we do less strokes. Maybe we could make light in the concrete there as well. Now I'd want to do this as well. I'm not going to do all of it. But you get the idea. Okay. And we'll just show you a before and after for both images. I didn't actually do it for the previous image. Oh, I did. I did. Okay. But we'll do it again. Okay. So let's just make that fill. And of course, we could do it on the clouds. Let's quickly do it on the clouds to make that contrast, to increase the size of the brush, and just make, you know, just very, do very freehand and sort of be too precise because this is cloud movement blur and then lighter on the clouds and it just adds a little bit of randomness to the contrast that you've, you're applying by lightening the light areas and darkening the dark areas that's essentially what contrast is but doing it with the overlay blend mode on a pixel layer okay so Let's do a before and after. So that's originally. And if you look at the building, particularly around here, you can see how we've manually adjusted the contrast of the image. And certainly in the sky, you can see it before. It's very subtle. It's quite a bit darker there. Okay, we haven't obviously haven't touched that building yet, but you would do that as well. Uh, let's just go back to um, the statue again, just to before and after so that's before and that's after and if you look at the the shorts see that's a little bit darker and in fact i'm going to darken that even more really go down into it and of course the overlay will retain the texture the um the folds in the pixels underneath in the image itself it doesn't obliterate it doesn't overwrite it doesn't obscure it like the normal blend mode does what it does it retains that but then increases the contrast okay so let's do a before and after for that one well you definitely can see the difference in the in the shorts now okay so let's do that's before and that's after before and after okay you can see how effective that is in controlling how you apply contrast but using the overlay blend mode so have a go at that do share any comments that you've got with the channel uh, and with myself and i'll be happy to make more videos regarding other blend modes and uh, there's probably a half a dozen at the most blend modes which are really useful on a regular basis we don't need to learn all of the blend modes quite frankly they're not useful for the vast majority of users of affinity photo uh, for the vast majority of times so we just want to concentrate on the 20 percent of the software that 80 percent of us will actually need on a regular basis so do uh, give me some feedback uh, and a like and any comments or subscription if you haven't already subscribed would be greatly appreciated we're fast approaching the 500th subscriber i think i might do something special for the 500th so uh, let's see who that is uh, get subscribing and please comment all the comments i do read them and i do answer them and i do make videos as follow-up if they uh, if they warrant them thanks for watching and i'll see you next time <music>